So how you doing? So today we're going to get started on the uh, the how to pour the chainsaw series. Now we're going to take a different approach than what you might have seen other channels take. So whenever another channel does this kind of a thing, they typically just kind of show you the engine, show you what they're doing and all that stuff, what you know how they're doing it and, uh, and everything. We're going to take a different approach. See, I'm a little more old school and I'm going to apply a lot of the old school techniques to my build. Now, the best way to get started is to basically learn the fundamentals of chainsaw porting. And th these, these principles apply to anything really, uh, to all two stroke engines. And, you know, learning a lot of the fundamentals is a great place to get started. Now we're basically gonna start a learning process through, you know, through reading. And that, that's what I've been doing for months now, getting prepared for this. Uh, I have put in a lot of time and a lot of energy to this. So I hope you're kind enough to give me the subscription, the thumbs ups, the likes and all that stuff, post the comments and everything. But we are gonna be following a book to do this. Uh, we're basically gonna go through learning the fundamentals of chainsaw porting or two-stroke porting of any type. Now we're actually gonna apply everything we learn in the process. Now the book, um, if you wish to get yourselves a copy of the book, uh, you can get them on eBay and so forth. But uh, I did find a version online. I don't have the link to it, uh, but if you search for it, you can find it. The book is called The Two-Stroke Tuner's Handbook. This is the book we're gonna follow uh, to help us learn the fundamentals of porting. Uh, so if you would like to get yourself a copy or find it online, get it, and then you can follow along through the sections as we go through them and actually apply these techniques to our build. Now we are gonna apply these techniques on a partner P70 chainsaw. Um, now I'm expecting this project to be quite lengthy uh, it's going to take a while. There's probably going to be a lot of videos on it. So I hope you have the patience to kind of follow this through. Now the Partner P70 is, you know, a late 70s saw. I believe it came out in the late 70s. And this book I am referring to came out in the 70s. So we are using old school techniques on an old school saw. And, you know, we're going to learn a lot of the fundamentals, which we'll still be able to apply to today's technology. I mean, the fundamentals are the fundamentals. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, if you're not completely familiar with port, what porting is. Now, if you're wondering what porting is exactly, what, you know, if you're wondering exactly what I'm talking about. So porting a two-stroke engine is actually defined as um, shaping and enlarging the ports, the intake port, the transfer port, and the exhaust port. I mean, if you would define it, that's what porting is. Now there's many techniques you can use to get power, and you know, we're gonna learn a lot of them, and we're gonna follow the Two Stroke Tuners Handbook in order to, you know, learn some things and apply them to our build. Now, let me pull the camera off here and show you the book. Uh, I got it pulled up in my iPad, so I'm gonna kinda show you a little introduction of what this book looks like exactly. Alrighty. So this is the book that I'm talking about. This is the Two Stroke Tuners Handbook, uh, the version I found online. Um, so this is what the, I believe the cover would look like. Two Stroke Tuners Handbook by Gordon Jennings. So this is basically what the book is. Uh, it, it covers the fundamentals, the crank chain, cylinder heads, expansion chambers, cylinder scavenging, port timing, crate case pumping, carburation and ignition. Uh, now we'll be reading this book through and applying different steps to what we uh, to what we're going to do. And now let, let's take a look at the contents here. Uh, these first three sections, you know, the, these are just basically like your introduction or whatever. But in the fundamentals, they're talking about predicting the power, the piston speed, piston acceleration. Now, there are things in this section that you can use to help gain some power, but we're not going to be applying these parts to our build so much. Um, 
especially like even you can even look at like the piston the piston rings wrist pin crank bearings crank assembly a lot of this i can tell you that we're not going to be looking to modify these areas for the most part um the areas we're looking at the most is here at the cylinder head the combustion process the squish band we're going to be looking at that stuff uh, we're not going to be able to do anything with the plug location but it is good to read that section um, the cylinder head sealing and so forth uh, we don't have to worry about that so much because our saw does not have a removable head so the one thing we are going to really be looking at is the squish band um, the expansion chambers we're not going to be really getting into this we're not going to be building a an expansion chamber for this saw but this is a good source to kind of get a uh, an idea of how expansion chambers work one of the biggest areas we are going to be looking at is here with the port timing the specific time area the angle area uh, time area combinations emphasis on area timing limits um, we're not going to be looking at rotary valve timing because we're not going to be working on a rotary valve and then porting they have a section on porting and as you can see there's even more here uh, with the crankcase pumping, you know, your resonance effects and stuff. Uh, we're not gonna be looking at a whole lot there, but you know, we got the intake port shape. We're gonna, we do wanna look at some of that stuff. And um, I do a lot of reed valve work. So if you guys are interested in reed valves, it wouldn't be a bad idea to read up on the reed valves as well. Now, cylinder scavenging. This is one of the big areas that uh, we wanna look at with the exhaust port. The edge chamfers, you know, the port edge chamfers. You hear a lot of talk about the chamfers, and this book goes into it. The different flow patterns, multiple transfer ports, and the sublets. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff in this area we're gonna be looking at. Uh, the carburetor and stuff, we're not gonna be doing a whole lot with the carburetor. We're just gonna basically be trying to use the carburetor this all came with, and we're not gonna be looking to do any uh, and we're not looking to do any major modifications in the carburetor. So we're not probably going to focus on this section much, but if you get this book, you're free to read up on it. And then there's tips here for boring big cylinders. And we might look at that a little bit too. But as you can see, we're not going to hit every section of this book. Uh, we're basically going to go through the sections that we are going to apply on this build and you know, kind of pick and choose the areas we want to look at. Um, one of the first areas we are going to be looking at is in the squish band and stuff. After we pull it apart, we're going to take a look at that. So this is kind of what we're looking at doing. Now, if you look at this book, if you go through it, you'll notice that this thing will actually give you math equations and stuff that you can apply. Like this is an equation to help predict the power of the engine of the uh, of the engine. So you know, there's all sorts of equations in there. Uh, it might be a little intimidating at first at reading it, but I promise you as we get through this, you're probably going to feel a little more comfortable. Like this section here is talking about the piston rings specifically and how the different pressures apply and move the, might move the ring around and stuff. But we're not going to be looking to do any of this kind of modifications in our build, but it's a good thing to read because it's all, you know, kind of give you a better understanding of what rings do inside the engine. Now, I want to bring this to your attention. Um, this book, McCulloch has a, an influence in this book, as you can see right here. McCulloch, the chainsaw people have used an arrangement similar to the one just described for years. I mean, just in that line right there, the chainsaw folks over at McCulloch have influenced this book. So we are going to be learning quite a bit here from many sources and we're going to be looking to apply them. So here at this section, this is talking about the cylinder heads and this is one of the areas we're going to be getting into. Um, it's talking about the squish band, the efficiency and so forth. Uh, I do advise that you read this. Uh, we're not going to actually read each section on these videos but we are going to basically looking at what we've read, studying up with it. So your homework is to basically read each section as we're getting to it. So whenever we pull, first pull this saw apart, we are going to be looking at the cylinder head, basically the squish band and so forth. So this will be your homework assignment, which would be to read this section of this book, learn some stuff. Um, it's talking about, you know, the combustion chamber, 
with no squish band and the plug offset. You know, this is kind of explaining to you how the flow from the, basically the explosion, how it flows across the piston when the, the, the spark plug is offset. Then in here, it's talking about how a lot of our chainsaws are, which is when the, the plug is centered. And this kind of really gets into explaining to you about the squish band and some of the things you can expect with the squish band with different modifications that you can make and everything. Um, it also talks about you know, some of the limitations and stuff. So I suggest that you read this section because we are going to apply some of the techniques we've learned through this section when making decisions on what to do with the squish band. Now, this is what I'm talking about in particular. This is you know, the width of the squish band. Uh, we're going to look at changing that. And, you know, uh, we want to learn what this does. Squish band should constitute about half the cylinder bore area. Clearance between piston and cylinder head should be held to a minimum to avoid effectively losing about 5% of working mixture. So this is one of the things that we are going to look at applying. Um, so I do suggest you get yourself a copy of the book or find it online and that way you can kind of follow along because these are the techniques that I'm going to apply in the build. So I hope I didn't bore you too much with this little video, but uh, I needed to get you guys on the same page as me uh, to start this off to get you guys, you know, some people prefer the printed version and they are out there. Uh, I've seen copies of it go up on eBay, but it is possible to get it online and um, you can, it's a PDF file is what I have uh, and you can print them out. So yeah, that's, that's where we're going to start this at. And I needed to get you guys on the same page. Uh, I just, that's your little homework assignment. If you want to follow this and get your books, get them ready, because these are the techniques we are going to apply. Now, remember, I am kind of learning some of these fundamentals along with you. I am just several weeks ahead because I have been working at this already, getting prepared to make these videos. So feel free to make suggestions along the way. Um, I encourage it actually. It helps because then it becomes a group effort and two heads are better than one. And you know, what if there's 200 people watching this video series? Well, that's 200 heads coming together to make the decisions in this process, you know, make suggestions. Maybe, maybe there's something in here I missed and you know, you might be able to find it and pick it out and everything. So, so please get your books and get them ready. Uh, the next video on this series, we will be getting a baseline run on the chainsaw. It'll be the first cutting video on this video, this video series of this chainsaw. I have already made videos of it cutting, but we're going to make a cutting video for this series specifically to get a baseline run. And we're going to compare it to another saw that is a modern saw, roughly the same displacement. Uh, it's actually a 372 clone made by Holtzforma. So we're going to do a comparison video of those two saws. Uh, one is brand new and the other one is from the 70s. So we're going to kind of get to see how much technology might have changed between those two saws in that time period, you know? And we're going to be looking at different modifications we could do to try to bring the P70 up to a much better performance level. So get prepared. Uh, we, the next video will be actually doing some cutting and getting a baseline. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please get your subscriptions in and follow along. Thank you. See you in the next one.